guys, I'm back. I am going to start. Okay, so this whole video is about a new series I want to do where I read three books from a popular author and discuss them with you and kind of discuss the author with you. For the authors I'm going to pick, obviously, if you are a well known author, you're going to have a lot of books. I'm hoping to go with like the three most popular books or the three books that I see most often. Or if they have a series like today, uh, we'll just go through the series. If you guys have any suggestion for authors, please put them down below. Um, today, we're going to be talking about Evie Dunmore and A League of Extraordinary Women. It's a historical romance series. So we're going to get started with that. I think my next one for next month, so you kind of know, hit the uh, bell icon if you want notifications so you don't miss it. But uh, the Christine, Christina Hanna, I think is going to be next month. So... Fingers crossed that I can finish three historical romances as well next month and they're all 400 plus pages. I don't, honestly, I, I don't even think they're romances. Like I said, whole new, whole new vibe, whole new thing. I've never read a Christine Hanna book. I just got the four wins from Book of the Month because it was their book of the year. I was like, you know, I need to read this. Decided to go ahead and throw it in the series. And I think they actually are just like historical fiction novels. So maybe like a touch of romance in there, but they shouldn't be like romance like we're going to talk about today. So that is interesting. Um, I have a couple other ones. I want to do like a, I keep want to say Evelyn Hugo, but <laughs> I know that's a Taylor Jenkins Reid series. I want to do um, a Jojo Moyes series because I have a couple of her books already. Like it's going to be a great way for me to get books off my TBR and hopefully give you guys some new content as far as a new idea. Um, if you have any authors that you recommend, please send them my way. I think at this point, like we kind of get the vibe of what I like to read, which is basically anything and everything. So any of your favorite authors or your auto buy authors, please put them down in the comments below. But without further ado, I am going to talk about A League of Extraordinary Women. So disclaimer, last time I did my favorites of 2022, I held up this book. I really meant this book this book has sebastian in it. this was one that was really funny but i'll go ahead and uh put that in as a disclaimer but anyways moving on um bringing down the duke by evie dunmore is the first in this kind of series the series is about a group of suffragists um women in the i want to say 1900s early 1900s oh yep 1879 exactly actually and their journeys through love specifically love Not, i mean there's obviously a little bit of history and there's a little bit about the suffrage movement and like the historical setting that they are in, but it is about their love lives and their little group of women. And I absolutely love this series, surprisingly. It took me a really long time to pick this up. Finally did when I got into like my romance phase this year or 2021. And I really liked it. Bringing down the Duke, I will just go book by book, I guess. We is about Annabelle and Montgomery. So Annabelle is from the poorer section of the economic classes. She gets a scholarship to go to Oxford. While she's there at Oxford, she gets involved with the suffragist movement. When she's part of the suffragist movement, she meets Montgomery, who is a duke. And they go back and forth throughout this entire book. So the issue is Annabelle doesn't want to marry a man that is rich because she had other dealings with another man who was rich and he used and abused her and left her for good and that has left a bad taste in her mouth so she doesn't want to get involved with him. Um, a common theme throughout both all these books is that women, these women don't want to get married because they lose a lot of their rights when they get married. So they are <laughs> trying to find their ways around that and how they handle that because then the Duke falls in love with her. However, the Duke once needs to marry someone of his own social class because he is also in some, I don't even think financial trouble. I just think part of the public view of him is that he needs to get married to a woman of his class. So they go back and forth. That's kind of the conflict, the main conflict in this book. I obviously like this book because I went on and read the other two books. I think that the banter in these books are amazing. I love the women though. I think that's like where I love it the most is like the, the chemistry between the women and their partners is so adorable and loving and I get excited about it but that would be bringing down the duke all right I think I give this like a three star but like I said I'm not I'm not a romance reader necessarily so I think I give a lot of these three stars because I'm just getting into the genre and I don't really know what's good or what's bad or like what my vibes are um this is definitely a three star for me 
the next book the one that I meant to talk about in my 2021 best of favorites is a rogue of one's own so this is about I always had to check the characters names because I suck at character names Lady Lucy and Tristan aka Sebastian I want to say his last name was Sebastian I think I clearly remember that this was Sebastian but Sebastian is known as a ladies man and Miss Lady Lucy. Lady Lucy obviously is a lady. Um, she's an older woman so she's feeling a lot of pressure to get married from her family. Um, she lives on her own. Um, she has her own money. Very interesting as far as like the historical setting and the suffragist movement. And then she meets Sebastian who is known to be a, a woman's man, like a, a ladies man. Um, and he has a really bad reputation. He is known for doing not bad dealings, but he gets himself into a lot of trouble a lot of the times. Um, none of the other women in like their little group like care for him. Um, however, Lucy ends up obviously falling in love with him and she has to battle with the, the idea of does she want to get married? Does she want to have that sort of relationship? She's also in the as far as like the, their group of suffragists, what they're trying to do in this book is buy a printing company in order to print for women and their suffragist movement. And he buys out part of it and she buys out the other half. So they have business dealings. They keep bumping into each other. She wants to get rid of them. She understands that she's got feelings for them. This one also is interesting because Lady Lucy goes to another woman who is older and kind of talks to her about like hey i'm falling in love with this guy i don't want to give up all my rights and this and this woman is just like hey you love him what are you gonna do and it's really interesting i love that i love sebastian i think he's absolutely hilarious he's probably my favorite male character so far i'm a sebastian lover what can i say he is a rogue if nothing else so love this one the next one i recently read um also i i'm out of the series this one's my favorite I don't know if that means it gets a four star or if it's still kind of three star. What do you, I don't know, you tell me. How, how should I rate that? The next one is A Portrait of a Scotsman. So this one is Miss Hattie Greenfield. Hattie Greenfield is, she's upper class. She comes from a well-off family. That plays a lot into it. So she ends up meeting Blackford. And Blackford is a man who came from the bottom to the top. He is a Scotsman, obviously, and he's in London. So that if you know the historical setting, you already know that Irishmen and Scotsmen were kind of looked down upon in this era. Um, they were the immigrants of the time. So as we all know, history always repeats itself. Immigrants are always have a harder time coming into society, but he ends up doing that. He does a couple of bad dealings. You kind of get introduced to him in the other series, specifically A Rogue of One's Own because Sebastian and Blackford are friends. Kind of, I guess, more like businessmen. <laughs> um, Blackford does a lot of blackmailing. He's just like bad money to like this society. But he and Hattie bump into each other. Um, Blackford's also kind of a ladies man. So Hattie gets herself into trouble. And this trope is, I'll go ahead and it's not, this isn't me ruining it because it happens within like the first few chapters they end up getting married because of an incident or a couple of incidences. I don't know if Nim Nim's gonna make an appearance. You've seen Lilith. This is Nim Nim, by the way. She's gonna go in her hidey hole. She's the grumpy old lady. Anyways, off topic. This book I didn't enjoy as much. So like I said, I love Sebastian. I was okay with these characters. However, Hattie actively makes me angry. <laughs> so Blackford came, like I said, from uh, Scots Scot Scotland, um, from a coal, like, town and if you know anything about coal mining it's very um, unhealthy and a lot of men die early and so he gets into the coal business in order to try to improve that Hattie now as his wife travels with him and you like there's an attempt at character development with Hattie as far as like she is a rich uppity naive young girl and she doesn't understand like the tragedies that at least Blackford has experienced and other people are experiencing and I never really see like you you can tell like they're trying to develop Hattie um Evie is anyways Dunmore is um trying to develop Hattie into a more mature woman into one who makes her own decisions into one that is more worldly and I don't see that happening the only character development I get from Hattie is that 
she discovers that she likes it rough. <laughs> and that's really the only development that you find in this is that she accepts her sexuality. She accepts her kink. Um, that's really all I get from this. Hattie is still the spoiled brat that you start off with at the beginning of this book. Now, the redeeming quality for this book is Blackford. Evie Dunmore can write some morally gray, handsome ass, protective men and I love it. Blackford in here is like a big teddy bear. Like you just want to give him a hug. <laughs> You're just like, come here. Let me give you a hug, a pat on the hat. Mama Barthe is here. We're going to make it through. Um, because he does go back to that town and um, tragedy strikes and you learn more about his history as far as being a coal miner, all the tragedy he's seen as a child and as a young adult why he does the things he does as far as like blackmailing and being seen as bad money. And I love it. I love Blackford. I wish I got like Hattie. I wish he had a better partner than Hattie. <laughs> Hi. No, I'm just kidding. Um, as far as crushing off fictional men, definitely a Blackford fan. Um, this one was, has to be a three star just because Hattie kind of ruined it for me. I'm not going to lie. Um, as far Oh, and then I said I was going to read three books, but there sh might be a fourth in this series, um, and it might be a sapphic romance. So in this book, you are introduced to one of Blackford's um, friends from the streets, and she is, I don't, I don't want to say, I mean, it's a sapphic romance. She is in love with another woman, and so you get, like, maybe we might get a fourth one, and I would love to see a sapphic romance set in this setting um, with the suffragist movement and these, and these group of women who are amazing and they're lovely men. Um, as far as a series in a whole, as a whole, if you like historical romances, you need to pick this up. 100% need to pick this up. If you are interested in that historical setting, I would pick this up and just like want something fun to read, not necessarily historically accurate. Actually not, I want to say this, the series is pretty historically accurate. So if you want to read something fun, learn a little bit more about the suffragist movement, learn a little bit more about what women were able and were not able to do back then. Um, definitely pick this up. I got these from the book of the month, so they're in like a nice little trio. I, yeah, I loved it. Eve Dunmore definitely knows how to write some good banter, which is a, a necessity when you are writing romance, at least for me. You see quite a few of them have some character development besides Hattie. I don't want to talk about her. <laughs> she stole my man. You get to, like, she writes like these morally gray, mysterious men. The tension in these relationships is beautiful. It makes you want to read more. It keeps you on the edge of your seat. I highly recommend Evie Dunmore as far as a series goes. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, her writing style is quite enjoyable as far as a romance goes. It, it was good. It wasn't like too fast paced. I feel like with some romances I read, it just jumps in and becomes a little too fast paced for my sense. Um, definitely not a Mariana Zapata as far as like a slow burn romance. These aren't slow burn romances, but they're not like jump in and they're doing dirty things on the second chapter. You know what I mean? But anyways, loved it. Highly, I do recommend. And yeah, stay tuned for the next one. Um, excited about the Christina Hannah. Like I said at the beginning of this video, I'm excited for Kristen Hannah. I hear that her books are sad just to be sad, and I'm hoping that's not the case. I'm excited to do a little bit of historic fiction reading. It's been a while. But yeah, thank you for joining me. Like I said, if you have any recommendations for authors, please put them down below. I'm hoping to do like one of these videos a month, um, especially if I'm gonna have to read three books from the same author. And I am trying to clear off my TBRs. But yeah, thanks for joining me. Uh, make sure you subscribe. Like hit the, hit the notification button so you don't miss out on the series if you enjoyed this video. And also like and comment. Please comment. Um, I love hearing from you guys. So I will see you in the next one. Bye. Oh my god, character names drive me insane. I know I should know.